Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we find the shortest distance of a point from a plane. And let's say that point is given by P and the plane is given by Pi. That shortest distance will be a perpendicular drawn from the point to the plane. Now in order to find this distance, I need to take you back through some basic theory first of all. So you should be familiar with the scalar product form of a plane, r dot n equals d, where r is the position vector of any point on the plane from the origin there, and n is a normal to the plane, and it's got components capital A, capital B, capital C, okay? And this equals a constant d. If you're unsure of this, do check out my earlier videos on the scalar product form of a plane. Now, if r is the position vector of a point on the plane, let's say with coordinates x, y, z, then if I dot x, y, z with the normal vector a, b, c, and it equals d, we get the Cartesian form of the plane, which again, you should be familiar with, ax plus by plus cz equals that constant d. So do check out the Cartesian form of a plane if you're unsure of this, okay? Now these are two forms then of the equation of a plane. And I also showed you that there's another form that is very useful to us, and that is if you divide both sides of this equation by the magnitude of the normal vector. So let's just put this down here, okay? If we take r dot n, equals the constant d, and divide by the magnitude of the normal vector to both sides, then when we divide a vector by its magnitude, we create a unit vector. So in this case, we've got r dotted with the unit normal to the plane equals a constant divided by a constant, which gives us another constant, and I'll call that small d. And I showed you in an earlier video the meaning of this value d. If we took the magnitude of it, it gave us the shortest distance from the origin to the plane. So if I represent that on here, taking this to be our origin, the magnitude of d gives us this distance to the plane pi. Just write that in there as the magnitude of d. Now I can use this concept to get the distance from the point p to this plane. And I do it by considering a plane parallel to pi that contains the point p. Something like this. So if I knew the equation of the plane pi 1, then by a similar method to this, I could get the distance from the origin to the plane pi 1, then if I knew that distance, all I've got to do is take away this distance from it, and I should be able to find the distance that p is from the plane. So what is the equation of this plane? Well, I know that it's got to have the form r dotted with a normal to the plane. Well, this normal is perpendicular to this plane, so it's going to be the same value of n, only this time it's going to have a different constant to d. Let's say we call it d1. And if r is any position vector on this plane with coordinates x, y, z, then the Cartesian form is going to be ax plus by plus cz equals that constant d1. And that would mean that this distance up here would be, okay, capital D1 divided by the magnitude of the vector n. And I'll call that little d1. So we'll need to find the magnitude of d1. Okay, well that's generally the method. Now, just want to run through an example which should demonstrate some of the concepts involved. What I've got here is a point P with coordinates 3, 1, minus 4. And 
a side view of the plain pie, just looking at this edge here in this direction. And we'll say it's Cartesian equation then is 2x plus y minus 2z equals 5. So I'm out to try and find this distance here, which I'll call L. So I then need to think of a plane passing through P parallel to pi, which I'll call the plane pi 1. Its equation is going to have the form 2x plus y minus 2z equals a constant, which we'll call d1. And what I'm going to do then is think of taking the origin here, working out the distance to the plane pi, which we've seen then is the magnitude of little d, okay? And work out the distance from the origin to the plane pi 1, which I'll call magnitude of d1. And we need to get these values of d and d1 first of all. So we need to get the magnitude of d here and looking at our result down here it's the magnitude then of big D which will be 5 here and it's divided by the magnitude of the normal vector. The normal vector had the components a, b, c which were the coefficients of x, y, z in the Cartesian equation. So the normal vector will have components 2, 1, minus 2. And to find its magnitude, we just take the square root then of the sum of the squares of those components. 2 squared plus 1 squared plus another 2 squared. And if you work this out, we've got 5 divided by the root of 9. In other words, 5 thirds. So the distance from the origin then to the plane pi is 5 thirds. Next, we need to do much the same to get the magnitude of d1 here. But before we can do that, we need to work out what this constant is here, capital d1. And to do that, we know that p lies on the plane. So it must satisfy this equation. So let us just say that since p lies on pi 1, we know that therefore, okay, it must satisfy the equation. So putting our values of x, y, z into here, we're going to get d1 equaling 2 times 3 plus 1 and then minus 2 times negative 4 and this comes to 15. So we've got our value for d1 and now we can get the magnitude of little d1 that length. So if I put here therefore the magnitude of d1 will equal the magnitude then of D1, capital D1, which we've just seen is 15. So it'd be 15 over the magnitude of the normal vector, which is the same as before, but I'll just put all the working in. It'll be the root of all of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And this comes to 15 over 3. Okay, so we've got 15 over 3 there. So when it comes to working out the distance that p is from pi, I can now see that it's just going to be 15 thirds minus 5 thirds. In other words, a distance of 10 thirds. So to finish this off, I'll just put therefore the distance okay, of p from pi, the plane pi, that's going to be 15 thirds then minus the 5 thirds and that's going to give us 10 thirds. Now that's basically it. That's basically the method but you have to be very careful with questions like this because there could be cases when for instance 
instead of getting say 15 here it was a negative value like minus 15. What does this mean? The magnitude would have still been 15 over 3 but when you have a minus it means that the plane is on the other side of the origin. So if this was still 5 thirds plus 5 thirds here then we would have pi on one side and the other plane, pi 1, would have been on the other side of the origin. So the distance here would have been 5 thirds plus 15 thirds as opposed to subtracting it. So you've got to take care then if the signs in here are opposite signs. If they're opposite signs, one's a positive, one's a negative, it means that the planes are on opposite sides of the origin. If they're both negative, doesn't matter then, they're on the same side of the origin. So do take care with that. Now I've got another example which follows this video and I would strongly encourage you to have a go at that because it demonstrates this point further. Okay?